Friday fam. We're gonna piece it all together now in this video here to uh, to wrap up the nervous system. So pretty excited stuff. Uh, take notes and bear down, and this will all make sense once we're all said and done. It's definitely a lot, but it's uh, it's just a step by step process. So as we've mentioned earlier, resting neuron does have a membrane potential of negative seventy millivolts. So uh, for example, one action potential uh, is is needed to to send send a signal down a neuron so this to send a signal down the axon uh to the neuron say to a muscle or to wherever the neuron's being sent one action potential is needed to send that electrical impulse so to start this whole process obviously as really with any process a stimulus is needed so a stimulus in the, this instance could be a nerve impulse could be a uh, a light impulse it could be could be multiple things but nerve impulse light impulse Etc. 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 So the stimulus uh, causes the opening of the of the sodium channels. So the opening of the sodium channels is due to the, or it causes a sodium influx. So stimulus, opening of the sodium channels causes a sodium influx. The sodium influx is due to the uh, concentration ga gradient, as we mentioned already, and also you got it, the electrical gradient. So sodium influx due to the concentration gradient and electrical gradient deep causes depolarization of the cell. So depolarization of the cell actually causes opening of sodium channels. So this constant loop is a uh, positive feedback mechanism. So opening of sodium channels causes that sodium influx, which causes more depolarization of the cell, and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. However, this happens until this will occur, until the cell reaches its uh, reaches this threshold. So this uh, threshold of a cell is negative 55 millivolts. So once this threshold's reached, uh, there's an opening of all sodium uh, channels. So before, it was just opening of some of the sodium channels until that threshold's reached, uh, that depolarization of the cell until the threshold is reached, and then the negative 55 millivolts is that threshold. But once that negative 55 millivolts of a uh, of the neuron is reached, opens all the sodium channels. And guess what happens there? Uh, it's, a, it's a rapid influx of the sodium into the cell caused by the concentration gradient and the electrical impulse. So rapid uh, influx of sodium into the cell, into the cell, into the cell. This rapid depolarization of sodium going into the cell uh, happens until plus 30 millivolts. So plus 30 millivolts, sodium stops uh, going into the cell. So the sodium channels close down and no more sodium obviously enters the cell. But whenever the sodium channels close down, they de the sodium permeability de is decreased, but the potassium channels actually open at plus 30 millivolts. So plus 30 millivolts, potassium channels open, potassium permeability uh, increases, which causes the potassium uh, efflux. So influx is when uh, substances move into the cell, efflux is when substances move out of the cell. So the plus 30 millivolts causes the potassium channels to open, and which allows calcium efflux. So this calcium efflux is once again due to the concentration gradient. Uh, there's more sodium inside the cell compared to the outside the cell. It's at a greater concentration inside the cell compared to the outside the cell. So due to facilitate the diffusion, high concentration and low concentration, high concentration and low concentration. So the concentration gradient uh, causes the uh, potassium efflux as well as the electrical gradient as well too. So c concentration gradient and electrical gradient causes the uh, potassium efflux of uh, potassium outside of the cell. So this uh, repolarization will happen as well as a slight hyperpolarization. Uh, so repolarization, uh, the return to negative 70 millivolts, as we discussed in the episode previous, the return to a resting or, or a return to the resting membrane membrane potential of a neuron plus a slight hyperpolarization. So moving farther away from zero, a, a greater separation of charge. So this hyperpolarization will occur until negative 90 millivolts and then at negative 90 millivolts the potassium channels eventually close so that's that's the process of uh of nerve conduction here but the problem is with that the membrane potential of the resting neuron needs to be negative 70 millivolts and 
there's too much sodium in the cell and too much potassium out of the cell at this point. So usually potassium is at a greater concentration inside the cell than outside the cell, and sodium is at a greater concentration outside the cell compared to the inside the cell. However, at negative 90 millivolts, there's still too much sodium out of the cell, and, uh, or excuse me, too much potassium outside the cell and too much sodium in the side of the cell. So what the hell do we do? So the fix is actually something we learned about previously. It's the sodium potassium pump. So uh, the primary active pump, sodium potassium pump, three sodium are moved uh, into the cell while two potassium, or excuse me, three sodium are moved out of the cell for every two potassium that are moved into the cell. So just around the back, I wanna clarify. The uh, sodium potassium pump, three sodium are moved out of the cell uh, for every two potassium that are moved into the cell. And that brings our uh, potassium sodium concentration back to where it needs to be, as well as the resting neuron being at negative 70 millivolts. And then the process just continues again and again and again and again and again. And it's just, it's magical stuff. So just run back through real quick. We got the stimulus causes the sodium channels to open, sodium influx through the concentration gradient and electrical gradient depolarization of the cell until the threshold, which is negative 55 millivolts. At negative 55 millivolts, all the sodium channels open. All the sodium channels open, even more sodium influx. Sodium influx, the rapid uh, depolarization until uh, plus 30 millivolts. At plus 30 millivolts, sodium channels close, potassium channels open which causes or leads to a, uh, a s potassium efflux. So uh, potassium's moving outside of the cell at this point. It repolarizes the cell and uh, eventually hyperpolarizes the cell into, into, uh, until negative 90 millivolts uh, membrane potential is reached. Then at negative 90 millivolts, the uh, Potassium channels eventually close, but the problem is there's too much sodium in the cell and too much potassium out of the cell, and the resting membrane potential of a or a membrane potential of a resting neuron is negative 70 millivolts. So the solution for both of these problems is the sodium potassium pump. Uh, two sodium are pumped or two uh, potassium are pumped into the cell for every three or sodium that are pumped out of the cell. So uh, sodium potassium pump uh, three. Sodium removed out of the cell for every two potassium that are moved into the cell, then the cycle continues again and again and again and again. So uh, just to finish off this video here, I want to touch on a couple different uh, things that can happen in the real world, if you will. Obviously, these all these concepts are real world concepts, however, they make a little bit more sense when we hear uh, things that can actually happen, say, in a, in a hospital setting. So uh, hyponatremia is one of these. That's a low... Uh, low sodium in the body so hyper uh, natremia can cause obviously sodium influx to be slower so there's not as much as the concentration gradient which means the action potential takes longer to occur, occur or doesn't even occur at all so hyper natremia can slow down that action potential which pretty much causes the impulse to be sent down the axon without the action potential action potential none of the, the what I just discussed would, would happen essentially there. So if there's ion imbalances in the body, uh, the action action potential won't take place and none of the whole series, the whole sequence of events that I just discussed will take place in the body. So uh, yeah, not a good thing. You need nerves, you need nerves, uh, you can, conducting nerve impulses to uh, to function properly as a human being, as, as any, any animal does and then also other than hyper hyponatremia which is low sodium uh hyperkalemia is also a problem which is high uh, potassium in the body so high potassium obviously so the sodium channels open 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 to plus 30 millivolts if there's uh high potassium obviously that concentration gradient isn't going to be uh isn't gonna allow the potassium to move outside of the cell to uh, repolarize the cell. So the sodium channels will open to uh, plus 30 millivolts, but if there's too much potassium in the body, there's not gonna be a concentration gradient, so the potassium is not gonna be able to move outside of the cell, which will ultimately repolarize the cell. So if there's hyperkalemia, 
high potassium in the body. Uh, the cell's not going to be able to repolarize, and the, ultimately the full sequence isn't going to be able to take place. If the cell can't repolarize, really the sodium channels opening don't even matter. That It's kind of an all or nothing type type process. So the, the sodium channels need to open to negative 55 millivolts, which cause all the sodium channels to open, which cause re, uh, re or depolarization, excuse me, uh, until plus 30 millivolts, and then the sodium channels will close, and then the potassium channels will open, but there won't be a potassium efflux if that concentration gradient isn't uh, what it's supposed to be. So if there's too much potassium in the body, potassium won't leave the cell and the cell won't ultimately won't be able to repolarize. So uh, yeah, since the potassium can't leave, the cell cannot repolarize. So hyper hyponatremia uh, and hyperkalemia are just two of many examples uh, that can really affect the processes that, that take place in our body. The hyponatremia, the sodium influx will be much slower and the action of potential may occur very slowly or may not occur at all so ion imbalances are a problem when we're talking about the uh the process of, of nerve conduction and also hyperkalemia is another big issue uh the cell won't be able to repolarize and if the cell can't repolarize obviously the the full nerve conduction process that we just discussed would not take place so uh yeah, uh, if you have any questions about this whole process, just uh, type in the comments here and uh, get back to you and get it sorted out as soon as possible. But once you start working with this stuff, feel free to pause it, take notes, draw pictures. It'll all start to click and make sense much more every time you look at it, every time you work with it. But make sure you work with these concepts. They'll really start to become ingrained in your brain. And you won't even need a notebook at a certain point. You, you really, really won't. But uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video of anatomical analogies. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to work with all you guys here. And gals, obviously. I say guys as a, a masculine and a feminine uh, collective, collective kind of uh, verbiage, if you will. Peace out.